crafty friends it's jess from jesscrafts.com and today i am here with the doodlebug 6x6 booville collection i am using the 6x6 paper pad and the mini icon stickers i know that this is quite late for this year unfortunately i've been battling a cold which has been leaving me coughing quite a bit which makes it as you can tell or as you can imagine super hard to record a video and i didn't want you to you know hear me hacking up a lung over here however um i'm going to share this hopefully it's helpful to a few people if you didn't get to use your whole six by six collection this year or if you pick it up on a sale after the season and um, you want to make it for next year you know check it out anyway i am going to start by pulling out some of the most obvious parts of the card uh, sorry, the, the paper pad like there is this large happy halloween it's a big scene it takes up almost a whole six by six um, piece of paper and I'm going to create a really large five and a half by five and a half which is the largest card you can get out of an eight and a half by eleven piece of paper and I'm just gonna stick that down in the center it is definitely not a super exciting interesting card but it will do the job um, it's a really adorable little scene doodlebug makes such cute things that sometimes you don't actually have to add a lot to them think about it if you colored all those little critters and stuff it'd be a great scene so they kind of already have it done for you and um you know at halloween it's just a fun little thought especially if you were passing these out for like um you know kind of like you do valentine's at school but some halloween cards at, like for um, kids kids could make these for each other i do donate most of my cards as many of you know and i always have a link in the video description to the part of my blog that has a bunch of different places you can donate i will donate these primarily to cards for hospitalized kids that's a or um, a similar organization and they ask typically ask for no glitter and no small parts because those can present present a choking hazard and the glitter can present a breathing hazard for some sick children who may have some respiratory problems and so i tend to avoid those things even though they're not necessarily strictly banned and i would ask you to always communicate with whoever you are like you're interested in donating to to really see what kind of cards they could use and what their um, instructions and restrictions are However, I will be able to use some of that stuff coming up in some Christmas card videos because I will donate to the Caring Hearts card drive, which collects cards for adults, Christmas, winter sort of themed cards. And uh, that will allow me to get to use up some of those supplies that might otherwise be difficult. Anyway, back to the card making. As you can see, one thing I like to do is when I have a little image that you know I can create as the focal point of the card like I cut these three by three squares from the pattern paper there's one sheet of pattern paper in the collection it's black polka dots on one side black on black or a, like a dark gray and an orange on orange on the other side and I cut those to three by three squares because I thought they would be great for layering the two by two cut apart elements on you also notice off to the side I have a pile of sentiments and I particularly like the Booville collection because most of the sentiments that came in the collection I was able to use. A lot of times with Doodlebug, the sentiments are a little bit more seemingly geared towards scrapbookers, and so I don't always find them useful, or they might not just be appropriate for the particular kinds of cards I make in terms of like donating. Like I have no use for birthday sentiments, for instance. Birthday sentiments are great, and a lot of people would be really, really happy with them. I just can't use them for donating. And I also decided to pull in some ribbon. People have sometimes requested, asked, suggested that I add some additional things besides just the paper. I love Doodlebug because even if all you had was the paper pack, you can make some really cute cards. Like if you just had the paper pack, some adhesive, a cutter, and some white cardstock to stick it all on, you can make cute stuff but it can be fun to add extra stuff since many of us do have those things in our stash. And so here I'm pulling in some ribbon, lace, twine, all that throughout the video and helping me to use up some of those pieces of my stash. Another thing that I would recommend with these cards, especially if you had extra time, um, would be to add glossy accents. Like right here on this trick or treat, 
cut apart, adding some glossy accents would make it all look like more like candy or adding glossy accents on top of the candy corns would be great. I um, am using the two inch strips that are created when you cut down a six by six piece of paper into just under A2 size cards. Almost every single card that I'm making is an A2 size card. And you can follow the link in the video description to my blog where I show still pictures of each of these cards. So if you decide you're done watching the video and you don't want to listen to me ramble or speedcraft, then you can check that out and you'll see a still image of pretty much every single card. I do make two of each card, so I only include usually one image of each and you can kind of um, look at how it was made just from the picture but I also include measurements because some people have asked about those so they are A2 size cards usually the largest layer after the A2 is four by five and a quarter and this time I decided to add some orange and purple cardstock as mats however I did just cut them to the largest size so I cut them to four by five and a quarter and I didn't use them for a bunch of layers. No particular reason other than I was trying to card make quickly because I was trying to get this out closer, sorry, further away from Halloween. I, you know, people have requested this video. I was trying to make it happen. Unfortunately, life just keeps getting in the way over here. And um, so I was, you know, crafting quickly and not cutting out as many mats as I probably should have and would have liked to. There's a couple instances where I think another mat would have helped. And I happen to have purple and orange that coordinated pretty well with this collection. But one reason that I'm personally not a big fan of cardstock mats is because it can be really hard to coordinate it well with a particular paper pack unless that company also sells perfectly coordinating cardstock. And I do know with Doodlebug, you can get that like you could have purchased um, there's that orange polka dot black polka dot sheet i could have purchased some 12 by 12 sheets of it to go with this and use that for matting but again the scale would be different because they'd be 12 by 12 so all the dots would be bigger so i just used what in my collection was a close match and happened to have something i, mean, I know for some reason i have like 50 sheets of purple like thin purple cardstock from you know a big box store but um, coordinating cardstock is, yeah, just a challenge for me personally. I don't like to buy a lot for each particular um, collection. I'm just more attracted to pattern paper and cute stamps personally. I also like to pull out my corner rounder a lot for these cards. Um, it just adds a little bit of interest and detail without adding any bulk to the card or anything that could be problematic. Like I said, you know, gems, sequins, all that be a choking hazard for little ones so like nouveau drops because they again can be pulled off popped off and they look just like those candy drops that you can get at like old-fashioned candy stores i used to eat them a lot when growing up but they were delicious and i don't want any kiddo to think oh i'll just pop this off the card and eat it and you know most of them are small and they'd probably be fine but i would just uh, err on the side of caution personally so I'm going to continue to layer some of those 2x2 two two elements on the 3x3. Three three. What's another nice thing about the 3x3s three is they leave enough room for a sentiment. And I'm going to use those 2-inch strips that were created by cutting down the cards. And I like to use them as banners and strips and places to add ribbon as I ground my elements. So like by drawing this, um, by creating this strip of pattern paper behind my main image and putting a ribbon there it really draws your eye down the card through the image through to the sentiment and so um you know it just adds a little bit something extra these ribbons that i am using are ribbons that i got on clearance after christmas they are neon green which is very halloween as you can see by the neon green included in this collection but they were intended as christmas and when you pick up i don't know about you but when i pick up christmas ribbon they tend to come on like giant rolls with like just yards and yards and yards and as a card maker you know i'm only using like maybe six inches on a card and so those ribbon spools can last a long time so my recommendation is one 
restrict yourself after Christmas when you see lots of really, really cute ribbon because I have a tendency to just get too much. Um, I've gotten way better at it over time when I realized that I got, you know, stuck with a bunch of ribbon and had a hard time using it. Or split it with a friend or a, an organization. You know, like if you have, like your school would really use some ribbon for craft projects for the kiddos, you know, just take half of it and get rid of it right away. Because the price you paid, you're probably still getting an excellent deal if you get it in that clearance bin. But also to do what I did and think about ribbon that could be used for different holidays. So that green ribbon, great, works for Christmas and also works for Halloween. So I am able to use it up faster because I can use it for both types of crafting. And I particularly like to find interesting ribbons like that green one has some shine to it but it's not glitter so I can use it for cards that I donate and the other thinner neon green ribbon that I use on the very first card has a fuzzy texture to it so it adds something interesting to sort of feel on the card without adding again anything that I'm not allowed or I generally avoid because of health safety reasons for the kiddos. Here I'm tying some twine onto this ghost paper and it's another instance where I've used that large purple mat behind it and I am, when I tie twine around, I just wrap it all the way around. It uses a little bit more twine but it's so much easier than, I don't know, like tucking it around the edges and it makes tying a bow really easy. I just tie it like a shoelace and twine I find is very forgiving. You can tie it just like a shoelace and it tends to look really cute where it was with thicker ribbon. Um, you kind of have to have a better bow tying technique than that. So I tend to avoid it. Like you see a lot of the ribbon, I'm not tying it into bows. I'm just laying it flat on the card. I think that that um, also can sometimes make it work for more kinds of people. Like sometimes bows are read as feminine, which is a little silly, but anyway, Doodlebug is my 100% go-to for cards for kids just because as you can see they're just really really cute little images and even though there are um, a variety of colors I think they do a good job mixing it around so none of them are looking like too boyish too girlish to any like silly thing like that like it's just really solid design overall. As I mentioned before, I'm also using the mini icon stickers from the Booville collection. The mini icon stickers, I believe full price is $4 and you get two sticker sheets, which is a pretty good deal. They are, however, thin stickers. They are not cardstock stickers. Doodlebug sells cardstock stickers that go with each collection. They're a little bit more expensive and you just get the one sheet but um, these are thin sort of standard stickers and that's important to note because I've heard some people say they were disappointed they thought they were getting cardstock stickers however one thing I wanted to note is I am only using one sheet of the two sheets in the collection and or in the pack because I want to give the other sticker sheet away to one of you to say thank you for um, watching my videos and for leaving comments and of course, this is open internationally. I always try to do as many giveaways as I can internationally. So leave a comment in the video description about whatever. <laughs> you know, if you don't know what to say, leave what your favorite card was or what collection, another collection you'd like me to try or I don't know, anything you want to tell me. And I'll pick somebody and send off that other sheet of stickers and who knows what else will find its way into the little package. But uh, that way, you know, again, just to say thank you for listening to my rambling self. <laughs> and I'm going to, again, add some more of that green ribbon because as you can see, I am desperately trying to use it up. I bought it in purple too. Again, Christmas ribbon, but in purple. And so every time I am like sitting down to make Halloween cards, I'm finding myself pulling out that ribbon because it is so great for Halloween as well. And you know, it says it has that shimmer. It's really interesting. It has a fun texture to it. Um, but it's at the point where I'm like, I don't know how much more of this I can use. So split it with a friend. That's also a great strategy. That's kind of what I miss about not knowing as many people. Um, I used to live in the same state as my mom and sister and now I don't, so I can't split things as easily. Although ribbon is a fun one because, you know, you can ship it relatively easy. It's not too heavy. 
So that could be a fun thing too. Like even if you don't live close to somebody, you know, pull off half of it, bundle it up. And, you know, for a little bit more than a stamp, you probably could send it off and you could both enjoy something and even you could swap. Might be fun. So <clears throat> I am making sure to pair busy papers like the originally or sorry, earlier there was the ghost paper here are the little costumed kids who are just like so adorable i absolutely love them i always wish that doodlebug would make stamps that like of their images so i could color them myself but then i think well they already have the paper i have a lot of fun making cards with it and i have so many other adorable stamps i probably don't need doodlebug to like think of one more thing to make me buy that i can't possibly ever use at all I don't know, I'm no no about you, but like I have that symptom of just like I think, oh, I was gonna make this is gonna make a great Christmas card. I'm just gonna buy this stamp set, and then I do that five times, and it's really hard to use all those stamp sets each year. Um, and then the next year you have all those old ones, but then there's new cute ones. And anyway, better that Doodlebug doesn't make stamps and tempt me. So. I'm going to again arrange some of the stickers. In this case, I really wish I would have actually matted it with the purple. So I put a purple mat around the um, card base or like the large panel, but not around the orange strip. And I think that that would have looked better. So that's what I would recommend for you to try um, if you wanted to create something similar. I think I was just trying to be quick because I was really trying to get this video to you guys, I promise. And I'm sorry that it's so late, but you know, better late than never, hopefully. So yeah, maybe try a mat around there and I'm going to put up that sentiment again. Such cute little sentiments in the set. This one's Hello Beautiful and there was the Hello Pumpkin and Happy Haunting and just so many great sentiments in this particular one and I'm going to just keep building little sticker scenes. I like that this particular set of stickers lends itself really well to scenes and everything is, so, well, I was going to say everything's in proportion, but it's definitely not. They're like trick-or-treaters are like the size of the houses, so you can't put them together, but I tried to find things that sort of matched well together because like if you put the trick-or-treaters with the cars that's kind of awkward because the trick-or-treaters are taller than cars so you have to be a little bit selective what I do like is that they mix and match the sizes so there's a lot of like little tiny stars everywhere and um, or other elements and so if you need to fill some space you can mix it up with those stars so now I'm at the point where I'm getting towards the end of the card making, just like I'm running out of things to make with. I am going to get 24 cards out of this paper pack and sticker sheet. Like I said, I did add some extra cardstock to it. You don't need to. I didn't add it in such a way where it um, helped me make more cards. I just put it as a large layer. Um, Although actually, no, wait, there are some instances where I did put my stickers directly onto it. So in that case, I suppose it would have been better. Um, you know, you need a little bit more paper. But um, anyway, there are 24 cards and you could get pretty close without adding extra card stock, maybe 22. And here I'm again assembling a scene, but I'm trying to be a little bit looser about it because it's not going to be a scene that really makes sense. There are those like little candy drops falling on the witch. Um, however, I did want to make sure it matched. So since it says best witches, I wanted to use a witch image. And the first one that was pretty easy because there was that big witch trick-or-treater. But in the second one, I had to find something else. And so there's this little um, bus here that has a witch character inside of it. And what's funny about both scenes is there's like giant spiders on the top of both of them, especially giant in the case of the bus. And then like candy falling out of the sky which is you know not the most logical scene but then again i mean there's some days that'd be kind of fun as long as they weren't like falling too quickly <laughs> anyway next up i did want to use some more of the stickers and get a little bit more of a stretch out of them because my tendency is to try to like to use up like I use up the whole paper pad I want to use up as many of the stickers as possible rather than just a handful the point is to kind of show you you could really get a lot of bang for your buck 
So I'm going to take a piece of solid cardstock because I was running out of pieces of pattern paper that were really subtle. Like you couldn't add some stickers on top of those green spiders. It just would not work. Um, they would just like, especially because the card, the stickers are so thin that you would be able to see the spiders through any of the lighter images. And so I'm going to pull in this purple cardstock. I'm going to dress it up a little bit with this lace ribbon. What I like about this lace ribbon is it already has some adhesive on the back. Another clearance shop find. Not from Christmas this time. Don't know what from. I've learned to stop buying clearance ribbon though. Because as you can see, I have just oodles and oodles of it. And I'm going to just kind of trim it on the top and the bottom for a little interest. Add the spooktacular sentiment. It's not necessarily like a full sentiment. Like it would make a little more sense as a sentiment if I said you are spooktacular. But I still thought it was fun for the front of the card. And something I wanted to mention is, of course, you don't have to have a sentiment on the front of your card. You know, if you feel like, well, you know, the paper pattern work, I don't have any stamps that match it. Don't feel pressured to put one on the top or on the front. Um, my sister, who crafts, tends to not put sentiments on the front of cards and kind of like she makes a lot of great scenes instead. And I think that that's awesome. Like, I like that style, too. It's just... I think there's a part of me that just thinks, oh, well, cards have sentiments on the front. And so I just sort of do it without um, needing to. And um, I think at this point, I have just one more large piece. Um, oh, sorry, I have no more large pieces. That's what I thought. I have no more large pieces. But instead, I have several two-inch strips left. But the fun thing is that you can take two two-inch strips that are the same pattern and put another two inch strip of a different pattern on top of them and it looks like one seamless piece. And so two two inches makes four inches wide. Then you cut it down to the five and a quarter and you have another card, like large card panel, except for that you don't because it was two inch strips. I'm going to add some purple cardstock to it because at this point, and once I created those, I took the two inch strips and put another two inch strip down the middle, I am out of any significant size piece of pattern paper. All I have left is the three quarter by four inch strips that are also created when you cut down the six by six piece. When The way that I cut them down, it creates a four by five and a quarter piece, a two by six inch piece, and a three quarters inch by four inch piece. And I just use those a lot. It's different people like to cut up, up into sketches and all that. And that's cool too. I just keep it simple. And I wanted to, again, dress up the piece of simple purple cardstock that I'm using. So instead of adding lace this time to mix it up, I'm going to add the twine. I'm just going to wrap it around a whole bunch. You might have seen me sort of eyeball measuring it. I tend to think that you need, you know, just kind of, Pull the twine across whatever you want to tie it around twice for each time you want to wrap it around and then one extra time so you have enough to tie a bow. Um, I got my measurement slightly off and only had enough to tie a knot, but I thought that was kind of worked, especially with Halloween. Um, I think that the knots and the sort of looseness of it um, works great as well. It has a sort of like spider webby sort of feel to it. But if you don't like the look of the knot and you make a mistake like that, the other option is to just turn it over and have, you know, just no visible tie at all. To break up the scene, and again, as I said, I want to try to like use up the sticker pack. That's part of my goal here. And I have a lot of really, really cute trick-or-treaters left. However, the trick-or-treaters are a little bit small to be the focal point of a card. So I combined three of them together to make one of those cards. And then the other card, which was done exactly the same way, just included two trick-or-treaters and the little kitty cat. Now, as I mentioned, all I have left are these three quarter inch by four inch strips. And at first I was like, yeah, well, I'm done card making. I have 22 cards. I did a great job. And I was like, wait, I'm not going to throw out all of this. I surely can do something with it, especially because I still had that October 31st little strip and I still had a handful of stickers. So I said, nope, I'm going to do it. I cut a piece of orange paper to that four by five and a quarter size. And I'm just going to layer the strips with the sentiment and the sticker in between. 
not the coolest card in the world per se you know it's a lot of randomness it's very busy but i think that it turned out fun i think there's something to be said for the kind of mix of all the different patterns what's nice about doodlebug patterns is they all go together even if they don't necessarily look ideal together like in retrospect i don't know that i loved that ghost next to the eyeballs but they all are meant to coordinate together and so you can use a bunch of patterns on one piece of paper and by using it on the orange cardstock that helped to ground it a bit and um, sort of give your eye a place to rest from the busyness. And when I do add these measurements to my blog, I'm not going to be able to tell you exactly what size each strip is because as you can see, I'm just laying it down and then turning it over and trimming it off. One thing I'll say about the sticker pack, unless I'm misremembering, is that it had the word Halloween, but I don't think it had a happy to go with it which I thought was a little strange, but I guess it's meant for planners, I've heard. Like they say that they're kind of like designed for planners and that's why you can, there's a strip on the side that you're supposed to be able to like poke holes for your planner in. And so you would just label it Halloween and not Happy Halloween. So maybe that's a thought there, but I kind of wish there was a happy to go with it because that Halloween wound up lonely. But I would say for, you know, pull out a stamp and stamp it with there and use up that little bit left, you know, if you win the, the pack or you're trying to use it up. So I'll trim those up, add it again to my A2 size card base. As you can see, I really like to use my Scotch ATG, but then here it got a little bit messed up on me. Um, you can, however, tighten it if it does that. And um, I find it to be sticky adhesive that I can get at a pretty good price. Like it sticks really, really well. Um, and don't go too fast with it. If you find that like it's giving you problems, slow down a bit. Don't speed craft like me. So here's just a look at all the different cards I made. I'm flipping through them super, super fast here, but as I mentioned like two or three times, you can go to my blog and see pictures of all the cards and get some measurements and kind of take your time with it. Remember to leave a comment down below to enter to win the icon stickers. Here's all that was left literally all that was left and i probably could even throw another card together with it but i, I called it a day there um however here's that sticker pack or a little sticker sheet that you can get if you like this video please give it a thumbs up if you're interested in more crafting tutorials and kit videos i do a lot of 10 cards one kit videos i do a lot of six by six paper pad tutorials and then just fun random stuff in between be sure to subscribe to my channel. I really appreciate all the comments, thumbs up, likes, and I hope to continue to bring you great content, but let me know if you have any suggestions. Of course, links for the products will also be in the video description below. Have a wonderful Halloween and a great rest of the day. Thank you so much for watching. Bye.